no one's going to fix your life but you you always have to take a step up in the ladder to be able to get to the top you can't get to the top by flying up yeah. human beings don't fly for me what has always worked is having the small next dream you know uh, the next step when i was younger um it was really romanticized that you're going for it and just keep going and you know it's like you have to work 24 hours do four movies in one time you know five shifts don't sleep don't eat and the more a person does that the more successful you will be but as i have seen and lived more life i've realized having a work life balance is really important give yourself a break it's okay you just have to do the best you can survive keep your head above water and slowly you'll see you'll be walking on it so this romanticization of work has to be tough and work has to be rough and it's not work can be your companion work can be creative work can be something that gives you joy and now i've reached a point where that work life balance for me is most important i will work on the six verticals that i'm working on you know my business my production my book my acting whatever but when i switch off i'm with my family i'm at home i watch movies i do whatever i want to do so then when i come back to work the next day i have the focus to be able to do even more things i started working in the states in 2010 and in 2020 after 10 years of working in the industry i started with music and then pivoted into acting in america so started in 2010 for context in 2020 i got my first leading role how long did it take me 10 years so people don't think about how much hard work how much consistent knocking on doors how much humility it takes to go to another country and start from scratch but it required me to strip every single thing that i knew in india and the laurels that i had achieved in india the awards that i had won the movies that i had done the box office successes that i had seen it required me to walk into rooms with extreme humility and introduce myself to people to take my show reel and say this is the work i have done i would love to work with you you have to go you have to pound the pavement you have to walk in you have to be rejected you have to audition and you have to work around the culture of a new country and that was so hard i had to swallow the humility pill and i was willing to do that hard work and then 10 years later i finally got my leading role in a movie the tears that it took when you move to a new country with no friends no family working with people that don't know you and don't know what you are able to achieve when i first started doing quantico my co-actors did not understand the hoopla around me <laughs> they were like why is like who is this person like why are you you know the lead of a, that was the first time i got a lead role in a television series and they just couldn't understand why and it 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 required me to just you know be humble and say i'm okay this is a new environment it, it's it's easy to go you know fishing from your boat but when you have to go deep sea diving it's a completely different thing yeah. so you have to learn according to your environment so no it wasn't easy it was very hard it took a lot of sweat tears and blood from me to finally be able to reach where i have reached so when you say you know i i don't want to pass off um the work that it took to get there and the time and the commitment that it took to get there you have to shut off the noise there are many people that will want to pull you down but don't focus on that focus on the one person that believes in you focus on the light little sliver of light that you might see a little bit of inspiration that you might see and that's the hardest thing to do because you're bogged down by baggage you're bogged down by shackles of people holding you down so you have to really push forward and that's just individual do you have that inside of you to fight that fight for yourself or are you going to wait for somebody else to do it that's an individual choice the point is to be able to walk into a room and not be judgy and say who are you what are you doing you don't you know you're different you speak a different language that's not cool yeah. people speak different languages because they know more than you they know other things that you don't know the idea is to have your mind open to collaboration the idea is to have your mind open to what is it that i can imbibe from someone else's knowledge yeah. and i think i am a student of life i love different kinds of people and different things that people do I'm not running as fast as I was. I'm thinking about the steps I take. 
Um, I'm in a really comfortable, content place when it comes to my life, and the choices that I'm making are mine and are not defined by other people or the validation that I probably needed when I was younger. So I think that's made me a little bit more happy and calm. Why am I lucky enough to have the life that I do, and some other woman, somewhere else, with the same desires, same ambitions, same, you know, needs, doesn't have any of it? I really think about that a lot. I, it makes me feel like there must be something I did right. I wake up every day with a sense of gratitude, and I wake up every day with wanting to give back, whether that's with the person that is standing right next to me, or whether that is. A, a life choice that I might make, but giving back, I think, is so crucial when it comes to being grateful. I'm highly grateful for everything that I have, and I do think that maybe I did something right. That I've been blessed with the opportunity of having the life, being born to the parents that I was, being able to have the opportunity of making my own choices, having agency in my own life. If you think about women around the world, so many don't have that. Like complete choices are made for themselves, but my parents told me you have to have your opinion. It can be very scary. I mean, this generation of girls is fearless, and there's so many girls that take charge of their own lives, and they say, you know, I'm not going to fit into the cookie cutter mold that probably my mother did or my grandmother had to. And it's so like I have goosebumps right now just thinking about it. I meet so many young women who have changed the trajectory of their families because of the choices that they've made. I think my message would be that there's a lot of noise around us and people that tell us to be a certain way. I was talking the other day about someone that when I went to convent school, I had this thing called moral science, a subject mm. called moral science, which taught me how women should be seen, not heard, um, the lengths of our skirts, how we should sit with our legs. Um, there's so much that has been told to women that to be a good girl, you have to be a certain way. Good girls don't make history. Bold girls make history. Bold people make history. So if you want to be the lead actor of the of your movie, which is your life, you've got to take choices that might be contrary to what you've heard, and that empowerment may or may not come from your parents, may or may not come from your family or boyfriend or whoever you're around. It comes from you, and that no one can do. If you don't have that encouragement in your home, try to find it in your gut, because no one's going to fix your life but you. I don't know. I don't think about the future. I'm not someone who I plan for the future, but I don't think about how far I can go. I mean, who knows what my future holds for me? But what I can think about is my present. And like I said, I like to imbibe from people that I know. The reason I take new steps is because I see someone else doing something new, and I'm like, mm. what can I do? That will make me feel how I feel about this person. It's about that feeling. It's about imbibing from the people around you, and it could be someone you admire on television. It could be someone in your class. It could be someone that you work with. But when you see something that you admire about some someone, imbibe it. And I just love the fact that you can have an idea today and monetize it. Why not? You're not just reduced to. I won't say reduced to because I come from a family of doctors and engineers, but at that time in my parents' generation and the generation before that, it was doctor, engineer, lawyer, military, <laughs> government job, like those five or six things that everyone had to aim for. But today, like I think my generation of parents are not going to have those boxes for our children, right? You have an idea, let's run with it. Yeah. I think that innovation is the only way to evolve. And if you're not evolving, you're stagnant. It's boring. Bye. You should go to bed. <laughs> so I think. But for me, I, I, that's a little bit of a struggle for me. I, I juggle a lot of balls, and sometimes I'm just so tired that I don't pay attention to the next thing as much as I would want to. And I check the box sometimes, and it works, and it's okay because a lot of us do it. We just like you know go to work and do. The bare minimum, and I have to remind myself that the bare minimum is not my standard for myself. It always has to be more than the minimum, and you have to remind yourself to take some time. <laughs> you just have to take some time to, like, you know, whatever you want to do. Go to bed early. Have ice cream. Just feed your soul. When you feed your soul as a human being, when you're with your family, your friends, you laugh a little. You have, you know, bring joy. Innovation happens. Creativity comes from a place of. Feeling good with yourself,、mm. and I think the most important thing is to feed who you are, and then it, it just does.
what is my best opportunity at 18 at 25 at 35 at 60 who is it that you want to be so age ain't nothing but a number that's a real real fact mm. we put too much equity on age it just doesn't matter what matters is what you do about your life in the moment right now keep the people around you that are your champions and maybe this is also something i realize when i'm older but i tell young people this all the time do not hang around with poisonous people do not keep people around you that are toxic that mess with your brain keep people around you that are genuinely happy with happy for you only people that are genuinely happy for you and whether if that's two people you're a rich person i think the meaning of life is having purpose we're born and we'll die what you do in between that is your legacy and if your legacy is you know walking with sand between your toes and living in a shack and and being happy and meditating sure it's an individual choice success is very subjective to each person is their own my success might be completely not attractive to somebody else's success the equity that we put on you know you're the most successful one of the most successful people on the planet whatever great that's my version of it but somebody else's version of it could be completely different but i really believe that what your purpose in life and what you do between birth and death is is what counts so the pursuit of anything else is just futile the pursuit should be what am i doing in my life what do i want to do in my life who do i want to be who do i want to touch what do i want to create do i want to create or maybe i don't want to create and all of it is fine as long as you are at peace with the choices you make so make choices that make you feel peaceful